Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in this world. I'm DJ Unity, also known as Double Dragon 912. And today, 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 I am doing my top 20 favorite SNK games of all time. Wow. If you don't know who SNK is, ladies and gentlemen, it's like these are an ex Capcom employees that broke off and did their own thing. You ever heard of King of the Fighters? That's SNK. And there's a slew of games they made. But today I want to do my top 20 favorite SNK made games. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys and girls to sit back, relax, and enjoy this top 20 by me, Double Dragon 912. Let's get into this. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number 20 is Neo Geo Battle Coliseum. Wow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this game was off the chain. Um, this is where they, Neo Geo put a lot of their uh, franchises together into a fighting game. You got Homaru from Samurai Showdown. You got my boy Robert from uh, Art of Fighting. You got uh, the World Heroes in there, Fuma, Hanzo. All these characters are in one big fighting game. And it came out on the PS2. I don't know what other consoles it came out on. It might have came out on the Wii. I can't remember. But I had the PS2 copy. Still got the PS2 copy. Crazy Jesus. Um, great game. Great fighting game. Didn't get much credit. I don't know. Like, a lot of people don't know about this game. When I talk about it sometimes, some people are like, eh, what are you talking about, Double Dragon? But this game, I love it. Last boss is Orochi from uh, King of the Fighters 97. Y'all remember the Orochi saga and all that stuff. But yeah, this is a great fighting game. It's like a dream fighting game for Neo Geo fans. So ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number 20 has to be Neo Geo Battle Coliseum. Hey, can I say no escape? Fight! <laughs> Countdown alone, ladies and gentlemen. Coming in at number 19 has to be Aerial Fighters 3. Wow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Aerial Fighters 3 holds a special place in my heart. I used to play this game a lot at the move theater I used to work at. Shout out to my my former friend. I don't know where he at. Now, I ain't seen him in forever. Uh, Joe, he used to work with me at the move theater. And there was this part on there because I talked about this on my top 15 favorite shooters of all time. Smokes. It was like, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. It's so funny, but it'd be OQ every time. Yeah. And it also known as Sonic Wings Three, also. Uh, but man, awesome shoot 'em up. SNK did their thing. Man, SNK has a lot of great shooters, ladies and gentlemen. If y'all get a chance, see if you can find the Neo Geo Mini. Cause I ain't gonna tell you to go get the Neo Geo. The Neo Geo is, oh my. God, how expensive that thing is. And to collect for it, it's like, oh my, ooh, that's all I'm going to say. That's why I never got one back in the day. Back in the day, I always wanted a Neo Geo, but I knew a lot of people, y'all. Knew a lot of people, but none of my friends had a Neo Geo. Nobody. I talked to a lot of folks now, y'all. I'm friendly like that. But nobody I knew had a Neo Geo, so I never had a chance to play it. I always played in the arcade, though, but. Never had a chance to get me a Neo Geo, but that's neither here nor there. But ladies and gentlemen, great shooter. I ain't going to talk too much about it because I talked about this in my top 15 favorite smuffs. You want to hear more in depth about that? Click, click the iCard going on up there after you watch this video, of course. So ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number 19 has to be Aerial Fighters 3.
Fury 3, The Road to Final Victory. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number 18 has to be Fatal Fury 3, ladies and gentlemen. This game caught me off by surprise, ladies and gentlemen. See, I had always played the first two Fatal Furies, and it was okay. You know, they pretty decent fighting games. I ain't going to lie to you. They're they pretty decent, and they did real good. But uh, I didn't know about Fatal Fury 3 until I bought the uh, Fatal Fury Battle Archives. I think that's the name of it. it. came out on PS2. They made Battle Archives 1 and Battle Archives 2. And they were selling them things real cheap for like $10 back in the day. Now that thing done went crazy. It's the retro market. It's out of control. <laughs> it's crazy, man. When Death tried to collect now, man. These folks done went crazy with this retro game and stuff. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Fate of Fury 3, ladies and gentlemen. The first time the roster opened up, they changed the mechanics. Terry Bogard, Andy Bogard, my boy Joe. Uh, my sure Nuri, so hot. Um, and then you got a slew of new characters on there. I can't remember all their names, but I think Billy Kane then came back. But this time, Geese, storyline wise, Geese is still alive some type of way. I don't know how he alive after he fell off a building. And you're trying to find out something about some secret uh, scroll or artifacts or something. It's a pretty interesting storyline. I need to play more of it, but I enjoyed Fate of Fury 3, ladies and gentlemen. First played on Fate of Fury Battle Archives on the PS2. Way after, shoot, I had a PS3 when I, I bought that game. But yeah, this this one kind of caught me off, off guard, ladies and gentlemen. It, it's a good game. I still know it's going to be a good game because it's Fate of Fury. But ladies and gentlemen, coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number 18 has to be Fatal Fury 3, the road to final victory. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number 17 has to be Akari Warriors 3. Wow, now the Nintendo version. Now, I never did beat the arcade version. I always wanted to go back and play the arcade version, but I beat the Nintendo version. It was fun, man. I enjoyed it. Tight little storyline. Uh, beat em ups. Y'all know I love some beat em ups. Beat em ups, and I think on this one, you're trying to rescue. Either the president's daughter or somebody's daughter you're trying to rescue. And you go through a whole bunch of craziness. You go through water and all kind of obstacles come at the car warriors. But they, they put them full through. Ooh, them Rambo rejects, that's what I call them. They kind of look like Rambo. <laughs> but, hey, they some cool Rambo rejects. I enjoy beating this game, man. I just sat down and played it one day. And next thing I know, I, I think, oh. It's like one of them games where you just sit down playing and having so much fun, and you don't even realize you beat it until after you done beat it. I'm like, man, I done beat this game. Tight. But yeah, coming in, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at, at, at number 17. I'm trying to get my tongue right. It's Akari Warriors 3. Moving right along. Moving right along. <laughs> Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number 16 has to be Burning Fight. Wow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Burning Fight gets this list because it was the first SNK beat em up I ever played. And I played it at the arcade. I remember when I was young and I was in elementary school. Wow. That far back. And I was in elementary school and we had a field trip to the mall. And, you know, everybody else was going different places. The first place I went to, y'all know me, gamer, way back then. I went to the arcade, and I remember I had a whole bunch of tokens because my mom had gave us some money, gave me some money, 
and the other kids who they was doing their thing. I think me and this other kid played through Burning Fight and we beat it. And I was like, man, we just beat this game, man. It was fun. It's fun. Now don't get me wrong, Burning Fight is not as good as all the other beat 'em ups out there. It's like a I say a there I say a low tier beat 'em up, but it's still fun. It's still fun. The S and K you know, attempt to, you know, get into the beat em up market. Because beat em up was crazy back then. It was all the rage. Final fight, streets of rage, you know what I'm saying? But Bird and Fight was a pretty fun SNK beat em up. I enjoyed it. Uh, can't quite remember most of the story, but, you know, most beat em ups don't have no story. You're going through there, uh, beating up punks. I remember the guy I played with was the guy with the black hair. He had the kicks, he doing the spinning kick. And the other guy, the uh, second player, he was the guy with the blonde hair that mainly did punches. I remember that much because it's been a while since I played this game. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number 16, late entry, has to be Burning Fight. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number 15 has to be Samurai Showdown 2. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Galford, my boy with the dog, Go Puppy. Reason why I like this segment, don't get me wrong, I love all the Samurai Showdowns. I think I played majority of all of them. I never did. Let me stop lying. I don't think I played Samurai Showdown, that RPG they got. Never got a chance to play that one. I heard it was pretty tight. But uh, other than that, I played. I think I played the rest of them. Why I like Samurai Showdown 2 was, well, I remember one day, this is a nostalgic moment for me. I uh, went into the arcade. Arcades was a thing when I was growing up. And it was spring break. And everybody was gathered around this one big screen TV game. And I was like, man, what was everybody looking at? And you know what they were playing? Samurai Showdown 2. Everybody was gathered around watching people playing, and it was all the chain, man. I love that. I can never get that moment back. Well, never mind. I might get a better moment. Who knows? But that moment right there in my life was all the chain, man. I love that. Seeing Galford and all of them on the big screen, because at the arcade where I grew up, ladies and gentlemen, they always had, most of the time they always had SNK games on big screens, big screen TVs. Whoever uh, ran the arcades I, I grew up in, they really love SNK games because they always had them on the big screen. They never had any Capcom games on the big screen. I just not realize that. That's crazy. They never had any Capcom games on the big screen. They always had uh, either SNK games or Mortal Kombat games. Whoever ran the arcades where I grew up at, they were no real big Capcom fan, but they saved all the SNK games on the big screen. Wow, that's crazy. Anyway, let me get off that. But ladies and gentlemen, Samurai Showdown 2 is off the chain. You can pick this up on Samurai Showdown Anthology Collection on PS2 or current gen console has Samurai Showdown Collection on PS4 and Switch and all that stuff. Pick it up, man. Y'all like it. Storyline, all about Su, I think his name, I've said his name wrong. He acting crazy, you gotta stop him, and he made pretty much the main boss. He always crazy, man. Doing something he ain't supposed to be doing, it just won't be right. So you gotta get him. Yeah, Galfo, the Hanzo, and everybody's favorite. Homu! Oh, he, he pretty much Samurai Showdown's right here. Yeah, Y'all get it. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number 15 has to be Samurai Showdown 2. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number 14 has to be World Heroes 2. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, World Heroes 2 is one of the greatest fighting games, man. I love these fighting games back in the day. World Heroes 2 was off the chain. Boy, I love some World Heroes. Uh, let me tell you why World Heroes make my list. I remember playing this game, at least the first one, 
And I played the second one. I used to play them on Super Nintendo. And I remember I go, went through it and I beat it with my boy Fuma. The Fuma Ninja, the guy with the red hair. Pretty much they were like Ken and right. You had Fuma, he was like the king of the thing. And then you had Hanzo, you know, he was like the Ryu. You know, everybody sitting around Hanzo. But man, tight fighting games. Pretty much I think this doctor go through time and pick out fighters from time periods and they got to fight to beat this. I think it's a crazy alien you fight at the end, if I remember correctly. Been a while since I played it though, ladies and gentlemen. But War Heroes 2, tight. Another SNK fighter. SNK has some great fighters, ladies and gentlemen. Hanzo, it's Pluga. And Suzu, you know, stuff like that. Man, that's hum that's Hamaru. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm tripping. But yeah, Fuma had a little spin around move where he went up and down. A la la la. A la la la. That's it. That's the sound. I got him confused. But yeah, man, I used to love uh, uh, World Heroes too, man. Uh, the wrestler on there, pretty much he looked like Ho Ho. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Then the other dude, uh, pretty much was their version of him. Bison, he was a machine. And what else they had? Had old girl uh, with, with the sword. I forgot her name. She was pretty. I remember her. But uh, great game, man. Great game. I think this was the, the game where you had the death match on there, where you play the death match with fire be all around the ring. Or you just go to the regular match. I always did the regular match. But yeah, where it was too. Great game. I got to give it props. That's why I make this top 20 list. So coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number 14 has to be World Heroes 2. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we down to number 13. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number 13 on my top 20 favorite SNK games of all time has to be King of the Fighters 14. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, love me King of the Fighters 14. Now, this game came out right around the time Street Fighter 5 came out, and everybody was trying to hate on this game. I can't stand when they hate on games. The graphics don't look great. Shut up! Rappers were fine on this game. And Street Fighter 5 at the time was a atrocity they finally don't get me wrong they finally fixed three five to five they don't took them a minute but when it, that game first came out that game was trash you didn't even have arcade mode and maybe it had 15 characters at the same time while that was out you had kof 14 over here which had 48 characters plus two unlockables so y'all do the math yes kof 14 was a great game whoa my bogart boys back Robin and Rio back, they kind of got them right because, you know, the older game, they always used to hate on the art of fighting teams, used to nerf them. They couldn't throw the fireball all the way across the tree. I think they finally got that right. I think Rio still can't throw it for some reason. I don't get that. But anyways, uh, you had a new girl team, that girl, that I think her name is Alice or something like that. She's a big Terry Bogart fan. She's on that. She, I learned how to play with her. Even they had guest characters in. This first time I seen some guest characters in the SNK game. You had, uh, who was it, who was it, who was it? Ain't the first time I seen it, but uh, they had Nakaru from Samurai Soda. She was in there. And they tied all this into the big storyline that, you know, apparently Orochi is being resurrected. You know, they, they went back to that storyline. But, man. KOF 14 is an amazing game, ladies and gentlemen. Don't let nobody fool you. Don't listen to folks about no graphics. They look good. I like KOF 15, too, but 14 I like better. Because that, that's when the SNK just came out swinging. And, you know, everybody was joking on them about the KOF 12, which I ain't got no power with KOF 12. But 14 really hit the mark for me. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Great game to have. So coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number 13 has to be the King of Fighters 14. Player two wins! Yo, you 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number 12 has to be P.O.W., Prisoners of War. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this came as a late entry. I almost forgot about this game, but there was a game I played when I was younger, and I remember this game so fondly because uh, I was, you know, my, my folks had went out of town or whatever, and we had to go stay with our grandparents. And uh, my, my two brothers was doing whatever they was doing. Uh, I was in there playing POW. I really enjoyed playing that game. I just, it was like an escape for me when I was playing Prisoners of War. It's an escape from a lot of stuff that was going on in my life when I was a child. But man, POW, I loved it. I never did beat it because it was so hard. That was one hard game on Nintendo. Had some good music. But that game was hard, y'all. I never could beat it. Far as I got was to the the waterfall somewhere in the waterfall in the jungle. I remember that. One of these days, I'm going to sit down and try to beat that game. But uh, I think I might have beat the arcade game. Because the arcade game is two players. And the Nintendo game that I played the most was one player. But man, POW, I got to give it credit. Even though I ain't beat it, I, I kind of enjoyed it. It was a good escape for me back in the day. Escape from what's going on in the world. You know what I'm saying? Video games do that. Sometimes video games can take take a lot of pressure off of you. Y'all all try them sometimes. If y'all watch this video, y'all know what I'm talking about then. <laughs> Anyways, let me be quiet. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number 12 has to be POW, Prisoners of War. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number 11 has to be the King of Fighters 2000. Wow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is when the NES saga really started to kick up. Uh, this is Cole Kusanagi. You know, they, they kidnapped him. You follow the storyline. Uh, the NES boys, whoever they are, a crazy group, kidnapped Cole Kusanagi and made some clones out of him. And K is one of the clones. A lot of folks don't know that. K, K is a clone of Cole Kusanagi. That's why his name is K. And um, this is where we we got Strikers. Now, Strikers, if you look back at the game, Marvelous Capcom, Marvelous Capcom, I just did my research, Marvelous Capcom came out first. They was doing well, like the third person that you, that you, not the third person, you, yeah, you pick two people, and on the third person that you could pick, it, like people come out there and help you, like you can have seven Sentinels come out there, three Juggernauts come out there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Marvelous Capcom fans, y'all know what I'm talking about. But uh, with the striker system, they took it kind of like a step further. They gave it where, you know, you pick your four people on your team, but the fourth person that you pick is going to be your striker. A striker could be Takuma, like, you know, all the fighting team, Takuma. But instead of picking Takuma, they had guest strikers on there. You can have it where it's King Lion. You can have it where it's uh, all kind of SNK game characters in this video games. Now, a striker will come out, hit the character real quick, and go back in. Or you can stop the striker too, just like you do a Marvel Capcom. Man, S and K and Capcom, you know, they mirror off each other. Competition. That that will make that that happen. I like that. I like that. But yeah, man, I love the striker system. A lot of folks, I ain't gonna say a lot of folks. Some people don't like the striker system, but I love the striker system. System. 99, 2000, 2001, then 2002, they went away from it. But I love that that period in time. That's why KOF 2000 comes um so high up on my list on for the top 20 favorite SNK games of all time because I love the striker system. I mean, I love the striker system. Just, and then you can go in the options on the PS2 version and uh, pick striker system infinite where they can just keep coming in. That that was the tightest way to play. I love to play uh, KF2000. But anyways, let me wrap this up. I'm talking too much. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number 11 has to be the King of Fighters 2000. We are
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the halfway point. Thank you guys and girls for sticking with me for so long. I appreciate you. Let's keep this thing rolling. Now, coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number 10 has to be Kazuna Encounter. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this game I used to see in a tips and trick book back in the day. I was at the arcades playing x vs. Street Fighter, but I used to get tips and tricks book back in the day. You know, we didn't have the internet like, like y'all younger people do. Y'all bless y'all. just don't know how blessed y'all are. Uh, but we we had to rely on tips and tricks books, and they kept showing this game Kazuna Encounter, Kazuna Encounter, and it was like a tag team fighter, just like X Men uh, X Men vs Street Fighter, like I said in the earlier. Uh, SNK and Capcom used to play off each other, so this was a tag team fighter, and it was a sequel to Savage Rain, which I did not like. Oh, don't even get me started on Savage Rain. That's another video for another time. But uh, this one was Kazuna Encounter, and had the girl with the sword on there. She was like probably my favorite character. Then they had uh, that garbage dude with the boomerang. He supposed to be the main character. I can't stand him. He garbage. But uh, they had all these different characters in the fighting game. And they had Kim Kampong in there. But he called himself something else. He had a pole. It was tight, man. And it was a tag team fight. You could switch tag in and out. Just like SM vs. Street Fighter. And uh, just pretty much SNK. This was SNK's answer to SM vs. Street Fighter. A lot of folks didn't know about it. Cause like I said, I didn't know about it. I, only, I knew about it because I had a tips and trick book. But that game never came out in the arcades down here. I was looking for it. Like, well, man, what, what? Kazuna and Kyle, Kazuna and Kyle. It never showed up in the arcades where I'm from. I was like, man, I wanna really want to play this game. So I never could play this game until now, like a few years ago. Like y'all see the gameplay footage in the background. That's me playing, of course. But I think I got this game off the PSN network. I played, by, downloaded it, whatever. But yeah, man, I never could get this game, play this game. But when I got a chance to play it, I was so happy. It did not disappoint. It was just like everything I saw in the magazine. And I always wanted to play it, and it didn't disappoint, man. Tag team at its finest. Like I said, this is SNK's answer to X-Men vs. Street Fighter. If y'all know what I'm talking about, my Capcom fans, y'all know what I'm talking about. This is SNK's answer to it. Pick this game up, ladies and gentlemen. It's out on the PS4. You can download on the PS4 right now. Just look up. Uh, I have it going up across there. But la yeah, ladies and gentlemen, talk too much again. Ah, let, 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 let me get finished. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number 10 has to be Kazuna Encounter. Coming in at number nine has to be World Heroes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the original World Heroes was off the chain. Love this game. Now, ladies and gentlemen, why I like World Heroes so much, I remember one of my fondest memories. I think I talked about this before, but it, that was another video. Um, I remember we was at Luigi's Pizzeria. Anybody around here, y'all y'all know what I'm talking about. Anybody from around here, where, where I'm from. And... They had this game in arcade, and I was playing this game in the arcade, and uh, I was doing pretty good on it. And I remember my brothers, my two brothers, shout out to them. Uh, they hooked me up with Kill Instinct on the Super Nintendo. I know I'm associating that with World Heroes, but still, World Heroes is a great fighting game. Uh, like I said on the, 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 the number before, that World Heroes pretty much, I think the storyline is the his doctor, some type of way he can go back in time, get all these different warriors out of time, and you're trying to fight to save the world. I think from an alien, I think, I could be wrong about the storyline, but like I said, on this one, my boy was Fuma, you had uh, 
Dragon Lee. Uh, pretty much, he was uh, Bruce Lee. I think they changed his name in the later games because they were scared it was going to get sued by Bruce Lee because he pretty much Bruce Lee. Uh, who else you had on there? Fuma, my favorite character. Uh, then his counterpart, Hanzo. Then Rasputin. Um, who else on there? The muscle Power. Pretty much, he was a woe and it just couldn't say it. But, man, great fighting games at its finest. Please, ladies and gentlemen, you can Play the World Hero Series, ladies and I picked this game up. I remember it came out on PS2. They made a World Heroes Anthology. I had to pick that up. That was a no-brainer. So I love the World Heroes Series. I like World Heroes 2, World Heroes 1. I barely played a little bit of Jet and World Heroes Perfect. They never did do the number system out there. They just wanted to go their own way. I get it. They want to be different. But yeah, I love the World Hero series, ladies and gentlemen. But we're talking about World Heroes right now. <laughs> Anyways, coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number nine has to be World Heroes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number eight. This is actually a beat em up. Has to be Sengoku 3. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. This game, I had realized it. Uh, shout out to my homie Ben. He hooked me up with this game on main, but it, it, I kept waiting for it to come out on the PSN. I ended up buying it twice. <laughs> I didn't really have to buy it, I could have just played it on main. Would have been the same experience. Uh, but I ended up buying it on the PSN. Uh, you know, they have the arcade classics. I kept seeing it out. They had it out overseas, but it took a minute to get over here for us. But Sengoku 3 is a tight beat em up, ladies and gentlemen. You play with like four different ninjas and you fight demons and zombies, and it's a hack and slash beat em up. Pretty long, too. It's longer than I thought it would be. But yeah, it's. Good beat, beat em up fun. Y'all know I love beat em ups. I forgot the story to this. I know you uh, people out there that are not a big fan of beat em ups. Y'all like beat em ups with stories and all that stuff. I get it. I get it. But me, nine times out of ten, if you got a beat em up, um, Double Dragon 912 is going to play it. It's going to play it. I, I love me some beat em ups, ladies and gentlemen. Don't my name, Double Dragon 912. Y'all get it. Beat em ups. That's where it at. Beat em ups are back and I'm happy. Yeah, I am I happy. Thank you. Jesus, they back. I'm so happy. They back. I got tired of shooters and all the little crap they have out there. But anyways, I'm getting on the rant. <sighs> Let me get come back. Come back, Double Dragon. Come back. So coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number eight has to be Sengoku 3. If you had a Neo Geo, you got to buy a Neo Geo. And the only other way to play it was with the Neo Geo or an emulator. You know? And I had it on the emulator. Still got it on the emulator. But now they give you a lot of options. You can download this game on the PS3, not PS3, I'm tripping. PS4, Nintendo Switch, uh, and you can. It's also available on the Neo Geo Mini console that I picked up. I could have just played that one, but I was like, man. I played this was easier, you know, just pop it in and play. And my PS4 was already hooked up. And Neo Geo. I got it over the Neo Geo Mini, y'all know. I did unboxing though. Y'all wanna see that unboxing? Alright, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number seven has to be Blazing Star. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. I talked about this on my top 15 Smuffs video, so I'm not gonna try to talk about this too much. This is a great shooter, ladies and gentlemen. Big, huge sprites and bosses. I'm not a graphics head, but them bosses are huge. And one of my favorite things about this, like I said in my top 15 Smuffs video, bonus, bonus, bonus. I love that. That little girl. Uh, whoever, she might not be a little girl, she might be a grown woman. But her saying bonus motivates me to want to keep playing this game. Great shooter, ladies and gentlemen. Arcade shooter. I think it, uh, I remember I first played on the Neo Geo Mini. But I know it came out in the arcade, but Blazing Star, man, that's where it's at. The intro, real tight. You got the anime girls up there chilling, and the whole big storyline. Blazing Star is where it's at, ladies and gentlemen. If you can, 
play it. I, I think it's available on, should be available on uh, Nintendo Switch uh, or PlayStation. It's, it's out there somewhere. I know it is. I got it on the mini, so that's why I ain't read it. It's out there somewhere. Y'all check this game out. So I'm going to just be quiet. I ain't going to talk too much about this game. Sorry, I talked about it. So ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number seven has to be Blazing Star. Leave no ship. Get it more. Okay. I like the little commentary they got going on down there. Okay. Ah! You like good? You ain't no power up today. Dang, got me good. You got me good on that one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number six has to be Super Baseball 2020. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I love this game. I remember I first played this game at a Kmart. That's how long ago this was. A KR, Kmart had a Neo Geo game up there, and it was Super Baseball 2020. And what was so tight about it, how you hit on the game, they had this little mechanism where you pull it back, and and when the ball came by, you hit it. it like. And you, didn't, you didn't press the button, you used the mechanism to hit. And that was very unique to me. I loved that. Played it all day while my, my mom was shopping. Loved it. Loved the Super Baseball 2020. Then when I found out it came out on Super Nintendo, wow. I love the Super Nintendo version of it, ladies and gentlemen. Super Baseball. I did a whole season of that. Uh, I remember before, uh, when was it? 2020, I actually played Super Baseball in 2020. I had uploaded it on my channel, but uh got taken down. That was on my Sidekicks 912 channel. But, yeah, I had uploaded that for 2020 just to celebrate 2020. And, you know, this game way, made way back in the 90s, and it's just a great game, ladies and gentlemen. I love the Super Nintendo version. Probably more than arcade because I didn't get to play the arcade that much, but it was wild. Both of the versions are great. I heard it came out on Sega Genesis. I haven't played that version yet, but the Super Nintendo version probably is my favorite version. Uh, great baseball game and what's so tight about the game let me get to that uh it's, it's different than your normal baseball they have it like when you hit the ball uh to the right out of the field it, it don't be a home run it just bounce off the glass and all the way you can hit a home run you hit it straight straight ahead then you can hit it in the wrong area it'll be fouled and then all type of thing mechanism is it's a future futuristic baseball game and it is tight, ladies and gentlemen. I love I love Super Baseball 2020. I don't know where you can get it now. It's like a retro game, but yeah, I recommend it. If you can find Super Baseball 2020 and it don't cost an arm and leg, because, you know, the retro market, it's out of control. <laughs> get it. I highly recommend it. Futuristic Baseball at its finest. Coming in at number six has to be Super Baseball 2020. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we at number five. We almost done. Once again, thank you guys and girls for sticking with me for this long. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number five has to be Metal Slug. Wow. Now, now when I say Metal Slug, I like all the Metal Slug. Metal Slug 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, double X. Metal Slug, the whole series is amazing. They said... I've been watching a video about this. I got to do my research, though. They said that this was not... Uh, they didn't copy this off of Contra. You know, Konami's Contra. But I think SNK made this the battle with uh, Konami's Contra. You have Contra, and then you have Metal Slug. And both of them are great franchises. Metal Slug is a great franchise. I always played Metal Slug back in the day in the arcade. When I saw an arcade... I, on Neo Geo Cat, and I used to always play it there. And then when it came on to consoles, I picked up the shout out to my younger brother, love you. Uh, he hooked me up with this for Christmas, Metal Slug Anthology that came out on PS2, but they re them back out on PS4, I think. 
PS4 and Nintendo Switch. I might have to see if I can find a physical version of that and get that again. I don't know. We'll see. As catch it when it's on sale, the PlayStation be having a sale. But anyways, Metal Slug, ladies and gentlemen, got uh, Marco. I know Marco. And then the whole Metal Slug crew. And they always fighting crazy folks. And I remember this crazy dude that used to be on there. He used to didn't die. Every game he come at. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. <laughs> then he say, I'll see you in, you know, H E double hockey stick. I'm like, no, nah, brother. I ain't going there. <laughs> I'm going to heaven. You you on your own there, bro. But every every game he used to come back alive. He just wouldn't die. You know, I you know, it's video games, but man, uh Marco and them used to fight everybody. Aliens, old Egyptians, and then Metal Slug one or two. I can't remember or three. I played all of them together, they run together. One on where they had it where you know you get hit you can turn into a zombie. And then um then one of them they had it where you get hit, you turn you be big. And they had all type of different unique things to it. And you had to take the get a pill to try to go back to regular life. But when you was a zombie, you had to attack where you could shoot out blood out your mouth. Man, you know, slow games were off the chain, man. Please pick them up, ladies and gentlemen. I know they're out on Monica Day consoles. I know you can get Metal Slug Anthology on Monica Day consoles. I know they're out there. They're on the PlayStation, Switch, uh, Xbox. they on everything. PC. Y'all pick that up, ladies and gentlemen. I highly recommend Metal Slug series. So coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number five is Metal Slug Anthologies, the whole series for me. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number four has to be Fatal Fury Special. Ladies and gentlemen, it's kind of like a last minute entry. This game was kind of unique because they had your boy uh, from Art of Fighting. He appeared in this game, Ro Sakazaki. And man, this great Fatal Fury. Uh, Street. I know a lot of people know about Street Fighter, but not too many folks know about Fatal Fury. But Fate of Fury was an awesome series, and Fate of Fury Special was a very unique series. It was special because of that reason, because they had guest characters. And one of the first guest characters I remember seeing in the game, you know, they had that crossover. And Rose Sakazaki, you know, he was he was all right. You know, I played with him in Art of Fight, and then I saw him pop up in Fate of Fury, and that was pretty tight. And as you see in the background, you see me playing. That's the Super Nintendo version, pretty much the first version I ever played. I know the arcade version is better, but I wanted to showcase the Super NES version because that's the first version I ever played. I like both of them equally, though, but it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, coming in, ladies at number four on my top 20 favorite SNS. I'm tired. SNK games of all time has to be Fatal Fury Special. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're moving this countdown along. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number three has to be the original Art of Fighting series. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, I first played this game on Super Nintendo, and this was this game, unfortunately, I never could beat because them games were so hard back in the day. Art of Fighting games used to kick my tail, y'all. Ain't gonna lie to you. But what was so tight about Art of Fighting games, I need to go back and play through them and beat them. Uh, what was so tight about the Art of Fighting game was how big the sprites was especially super nintendo knew how to do that thing i know it was small scale from the arcade i played the arcade version too and our fighting too that was on the big screen too man like i said whoever was at my arcades they love snk games i ain't got no problem with that uh but yeah 
The storyline, if you didn't know, Robert and Rio, two main characters, they're going in the South Town to try to uh, save uh, Yuri, they, uh, Rose's sister. And I think Art of Fighting series was it's based before Fate of Fury series because you see them crossing over and stuff. This is all SNK. Uh, but they pretty much trying to save Yuri. And you end up fighting the last boss, Takuma, Mr. Karate. Boy, that juggle will kick your tail. I never could beat him on the Super Nintendo version. I got to go back and try to beat that dude. Oh, he kicked my tail. But that was the fun part about it. You know, I always felt that I could beat it. I just never did. You know, we, we used to rent games back then. So if we didn't beat a game, our dad and mom had to take it back at a certain amount of time. Then we'd just go on to the next game. It's probably why I didn't beat it, but... Great memories on Art of Fighting, ladies and gentlemen. I always hold a special play in my heart. Just how big Sprite is. How they used to jump in and jump out of out of focus. You know, to jump in, jump out of focus. That was pretty tight. And how you used to have to charge up to do your meter and do the whole oh, do can do doing a special move on that game. You got to really be focused. I mean, you got to be real precise to do special moves on Art of Fighting. They were kind of hard to do, but when you pulled them off, it was amazing. What? Love me, Art of Fighting, man. That's why, to this day, my favorite Art of Fighting character is Robert Garcia. And that's why I get so mad about the KOF games. Because after King of the Fighters 95, they, they butchered, butchered them. They, they made their fireballs weak. And they just butchered the whole Art of Fighting team. They didn't get them back right to, like, what, 2000 maybe? And then they got them right in the 14 and 15 series. But, man, they just... They did the Art of Fighting team wrong. I didn't like that. That was just my, my personal opinion. They were one of my favorite teams to play with on that. But yeah. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number three has to be Art of Fighting. Again, Legendary Men return. Fatal Fury 2. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Fatal Fury 2 will always hold a special place in my heart because that intro is off the chain. I remember seeing that intro in the arcade. They didn't have it on Super Nintendo version because I played a lot on Super Nintendo version. And Fatal Fury 1 was pretty decent, you know. They do, I think SNK were the first ones to do it where you could jump in and out of the background. That's very unique to SNK. I like that. And you, this story about Terry Bogard and, you know, Geese, he had to pitch in and threw himself off the building. And Geese, yeah, a lot of people like to say that Terry Bogard killed him. No, he didn't. Geese killed himself. But Terry Bogard tried to go and grab that man's hand, but he slapped his hand away and just threw himself off the building. Terry Bogard tried to help him. Stop trying to make Terry Bogard a bad guy. Idiots. Anyways, that's just my little rant. But well, Fate of Fury 2, ladies and gentlemen. Southtown. Uh, Joe. Terry. And Andy. You know, it's trying to... This time they got to fight Wolfgang Krauser. Geese Howe, which I have... I think he's either half brother or cousin. I can't remember. But he related to Geese. And he want to challenge Terry Bogart. He want to challenge the man that beat Geese Howard. And it's all about revenge, and it's a great storyline, and music was great. Terry Bogart's stage was great. Dun, 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 dun. I used to love Terry Bogart. Dun, 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 dun. Man, Terry Bogart stays off the chain. And man, Fate Fury 2 was just a great fighting game. It took what worked on Fate Fury 1 and added to it. If it wasn't broke, they didn't try to fix it. They added to it. A lot of people, some people like to say, you know, Double drag, you just don't like change. I like change. Ain't nothing wrong with change. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Add to it. Why try to fix something that's working? If it's working, just add on to it. Keep your same formula. Add on to it. Atlas is amazing at this. The Persona series, they know what they're doing. If it's not broke, they just add stuff. In incremental things to it. That's why Persona 5 won the best RPGs of all time. If you get that hard action RPG fans, I know some, trust me, to play Persona 5 
which is a turn-based game, you obviously are doing something right. But I got off onto a tangent, ladies and gentlemen. My bad. We talking about Faded Fury 2 here. My fault, y'all. I'm sorry. I had to get that off my chest. <laughs> but Faded Fury 2, ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest Faded Fury and one of the greatest fighting games of all time, ladies and gentlemen. Pick it up. I know that's out there somewhere. Got to be out there on the modern day console somewhere. But coming in, ladies and gentlemen, number two has to be Fatal Fury 2. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are down to my number one. Numero uno. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Let me stop being silly. Coming in, ladies and gentlemen, at number one on my top 20 favorite SNK games of all time has to be The King of Fighters 95. Wow. PlayStation 1 version, by the way. Yeah. This was probably one of the first SNK fighters I ever. No, I can't say that. KOF 95 will always hold a special place in my heart because of that intro. And that was one of the first PlayStation 1 games I think our dad bought for us for Christmas. Man, I played the dog crap out of that game. I love that game. I didn't care about the load times. And what was so tight about KOF 95 is the music. The music is off the chain. I used to just pause. You know, you can. Go, they had a sound test on, there on, the, on the PlayStation version. You can go there and just listen to the music. And I always liked the arranged track better than I did the arcade tracks. I heard the arcade, like, it was like more hardcore, I guess. But you listen to the arranged version of the songs, it's more jazzy. As y'all know, as a DJ, one of my favorite genres is jazz. I love jazz and jazzy mix. And KOF had, 95 had some of the jazziest music on there. Uh, Iori. <laughs> Yuri Yagama, I think that's his name. Um, he his stage always had the best music. I think, correct me if I'm wrong. Down the conversation, the guy, but the main guy behind uh, KOF, I think he was a big Yuri fan because he always used to give him the tightest music. Oh man, his stage used to be all the same. Dun, 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 boy, and the range version to me was always it sounded better in my opinion. Um, I heard the arcade version, but the range version sound better. That, uh, Terry Bogart stage, uh, my favorite songs on there was the, um, Storm and Sax, that's Yori stage, uh, uh, After None and Them stage, I can't remember that song, and, uh, Creeping Soul Pacer, that's King in them, and I also like Ryo, R Ruku Run By, something like that, I can't remember the name of the song, but... They always had great music, man. That what got me into that early in the KOF scene. You know, you like to hear good music while you you duking it out on a great fighting game. And the announcer was used to make me get crunk. Joel versus Kill Ready Go. <laughs> man, you talking about some good memories on that thing, man? I didn't care about no low times. I wasn't even stunned the low times. I got used to it. You know, a lot of people say, which is true, they say the Saturn version is so much better. Yeah, but the Saturn version didn't come out over here. It was in Japan, so uh, go figure. We got the PlayStation version. And I know, no times and all that. A lot of people won't tell you this, but I'll be honest. I know the Saturn version has a low time, too. Just not as bad as, you know, some PlayStation games. But there I go getting off on a tangent again. KOF 95, ladies and gentlemen, pick this game up. I, I implore you. Uh, you can get it off of... PlayStation Store and I think it's about store. They be having sales on this stuff a lot. And they got KOF the Rocha Saga uh, collection. It comes with KOF 94, 95, 96, 97, and 98. That's five KOF games for for not that much. I think the regular price is ten ten dollars at the most. Don't quote me on that, but that's a good deal. Y'all need to pick that up. My fighting game fans out there, y'all definitely need to pick that up. I love KOF 95 for the music. For the intro. Storyline's good too. Rugal, he'll kick your butt. Great, great games. It's great fighting games. That's why I come at number one on my top 20 favorite SNK games of all time. That about wraps it up for me, ladies and gentlemen. 
for my top 20 SNK games of all time. Leave comments below, ladies and gentlemen, of your top 20 SNK games of all time. It could be 10, it could be 5, it ain't got to be 20. I just really would like your, your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section. Thank you guys and girls so much for watching. Stay tuned for more great videos and top 10s and 20s, sometimes 30s, on the way. Double Dragon 912 signing out. Peace out. Hey, hey, hey! 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 Hey!